How you doing? Welcome to Tech Ed 2000. I'm your host, Jack Alvin, and I got a question for you. Does this sound familiar? You're a little kid just playing in your room and all of a sudden your parents burst in and tell you to stop leaving the dang lights on. If you're not actually watching the TV, turn it off. Quit leaving your ceiling fan on if you're not in your room. Electricity is not free. Go outside. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was confused. I didn't even know electricity cost anything. I just thought it was just there. I didn't understand why there was a difference between having the lights on or off. Well, it turns out, unfortunately, electricity is not free. They measure how much you use every month and then charge you for what you use. Now, you might be asking, how the H-E double hockey stick does the electricity company measure how much electricity you use? Are they charging you based on how bright your room is? Or how many stars in Super Mario 64 you collect? Well, in a way, yeah, but not really. Let's talk about power consumption. There are three electrical terms that you need to know about. First, let's talk about volts and amperes, also known as amps. An amp is the unit of measurement for the amount of electric current. Think of it as being the amount of water flowing through a water hose. A volt is a unit of measurement for the force of electric current. Think of voltage as being a measure for the pressure of water in a hose. You've seen volts and amps in the real world before. It's pretty common knowledge that most mobile device chargers provide 5 volts of power to your device, with the amperage varying between about 0.5 to 2.4 amps. A lot of laptop computers use chargers that use 19.5 volts because laptops use a lot more power than phones. Then you have devices and appliances that use all 120 volts of a standard North American AC plug, such as space heaters, air conditioning systems, and vacuum cleaners. And also fans, and there's a lot of stuff. Don't worry about it. In a typical home in North America, power companies serve you 240 volts of power. Oftentimes you get a couple of outlets that actually carry 240 volts, but they're generally reserved for high power devices such as clothes dryers, air conditioning systems, and some electric vehicle chargers, specifically level two chargers that charge your super cool cyber truck faster than a charger that uses 120 volts. As for amperage, the amount of amps, which remember is a measure for the amount of electrical current, typically is either 15 or 20 amps. Typically, outlets in the kitchen get the 20 amp outlets, but the other plugs in the house get 15 amps. Notice my frequent use of the word typically. Power standards in your place of residence can vary based on your region, the age of your home, and other factors. Do not purposefully try to push the limits of your power service. You could catch stuff on fire, and I can't afford another lawsuit. Now let's talk about the third unit of electrical measurement pertinent to the discussion of power consumption, wattage. A watt is a unit of measurement for the rate at which energy is used or transferred. This is the final magic number for how much electricity an actual device uses. Using the water hose analogy, you can think of wattage as being how much water ends up in a bucket that you're filling up with our imaginary electrical water hose. An electrical watt can be calculated simply by multiplying the amps by the volts. Most people know about wattage from light bulbs, as it used to be more or less a way to determine how bright they were. Or if you're tech savvy, you know about wattage from PC power supplies. But it turns out, the power consumption of anything that uses electricity can be measured in watts. Alright, back to power companies. Typically, electric companies measure how many watts of power you use in your home and then charge you a certain amount of money per kilowatt hour. Don't be scared by this figure. A kilowatt is just a thousand watts, like a kilometer is a thousand meters. And a kilowatt hour is just a thousand watts used in an hour. At the end of the day, you're charged for how many watts of electricity you use during the billing cycle, which is typically a month. I live in Tennessee because I'm the only 10 you see. In the city I live in, residents are charged around 12 cents per kilowatt hour, or 12 cents per thousand watts of power used per hour. But how much power does stuff actually use? Boy, do I have a video for you. Let's take a look at common devices in the home and how much power they use. I'm gonna be offering calculations based on rates in Tennessee because that's where I live. But in order to calculate costs for your region, you can use a power consumption calculator with your own rates put in. I'll put a link to this calculator in the description. First, we gotta talk about light bulbs because they're the only thing you'll find in every house unless you like being in the dark 
for some reason, I don't know. I'm gonna touch on two kinds of light bulbs, incandescent and LED. Incandescent light bulbs are the more traditional version that simply use a little filament that heats up really hot and glows like crazy. Light bulb wattage can vary, but for this example, I'm gonna use a 75 watt light bulb, which was pretty common once upon a time. Assuming you have one light bulb on for 12 hours, it'll cost you around 11 cents a day, $3.29 a month, and $39.45 per year. One light bulb? Yeah, I know. They're not energy efficient at all. That's why we don't use them anymore. Wattage for an LED light bulb can also vary, but generally it's 10 watts or less. Assuming it's on for 12 hours a day, one LED bulb will cost you one cent per day, 10 cents per month, and $5.26 a year. This is a light fixture with four light bulbs in it. If this light fixture had four 75 watt incandescent light bulbs in it, on for 12 hours a day, this would cost 43 cents per day, 13.50 a month, and 157.79 per year. If you still have incandescent bulbs in your house, get rid of them immediately. An LED bulb will pay for itself pretty fast. Now, if you were to put four LEDs in here, running for 12 hours, it'd end up being six cents a day, $1.75 a month, and $21.04 per year. It's much better. When it comes to TVs, the power consumption can vary wildly based on the age of the TV, the brand, and also the screen size. For my example, I'm gonna use a 45 inch flat screen TV. This one's from around 2007. It uses 90 watts of power. If you have this thing on for four hours a day, which seems typical, it's four cents a day, $1.32 a month, and $15.78 a year. Even though this thing uses way more power than a light bulb, you don't end up paying that much for it because most people don't have their TVs on as much as their lights. But I don't know anything about you. Do whatever you want. Now CRTs are a different story. This Sanyo model from around 2001 is only 25 inches and this bad boy uses around 120 watts of power. Assuming you have this thing on for the same four hours as the flat screen, it's gonna cost you six cents a day, $1.75 per month, and $21.04 per year. Honestly, it's not that bad, but these things are not energy efficient at all. And they also get really warm, which is a consideration if you're trying to not run your heater as much. Foreshadowing. Next up, computers. I'm gonna use my crystal box as an example here. You'll notice that the power supply says 430 watts on it. What is up with that? But this thing is not using 430 watts continuously. Assuming that this computer is running at about 30% of its total capacity, for eight hours a day, comes out to about 12 cents per day, 377 a month, and 45.23 per year. Your monitor, assuming the brightness is turned up all the way, is probably using around 40 watts. For eight hours a day, that adds up to four cents per day, $1.17 per month, and 14.03 per year. Now on to some less techie stuff. Guess what? It takes an insane amount of energy to make things colder or hotter. This space heater is rated for 1500 watts. Assuming you had it on for 12 hours a day, which is possible if you're in a very cold climate, it'll cost you 216 per day, 6575 per month, and 78894 per year. Wait, 780 What the f This is a window air conditioning unit. It's rated for 6000 BTUs per hour. That stands for British Thermal Units, and it's basically the same as watts. It's kind of like a Celsius and Fahrenheit kind of thing. Running this bad boy for 12 hours a day, you're looking at 253 per day, 7708 per month, and 92486 per year. I have two window units where I live, and both of them use much more power than the one that I'm talking about here, which is just a basic one from Uline. And I can say with complete confidence that during the summertime, over 90% of my utility bill is those AC units. Hey look, a fridge. Fridges are kind of like TVs. The wattage can vary drastically based on how big it is, how old it is, how warm the kitchen is. But based on my research, it seems like they use around 13 cents per day, 408 cents a month. What the f 400 and <laughs> what did I just 
You'd see four four dollars and eight cents per month and forty nine dollars a year. How about microwaves? Assuming it's a thousand watt microwave, which is pretty standard, you'd think this thing would use a ton of power, but it's only using a thousand watts when it's running. Assuming you have it running for about 10 minutes per day, a microwave will cost you only two cents per day, 61 cents a month and 731 a year. Now, if you're using your microwave enough to drastically increase your utility bill, you probably have radiation poisoning. And last but not least, central air conditioning. We're talking about the AC systems that are made for houses. Just like most things on this list, the power consumption can vary based on the age, model, and environment. But if it's a system rated for 5,000 watts, running at 30% capacity, a central air conditioning system will cost you $5.40 per day, 164.38 per month, and a stunning $1,972.35 per year. It almost makes me thankful for these dang window units. So at the end of the day, were your parents justified in their obsession with keeping the lights on as little as possible? Yeah, because as you've seen in this video, the small amounts really do add up. I will say in 2025, lights should not be your concern. Modern lighting technology has allowed us to light up our homes for basically nothing. The best way to save money on electricity is to try to reduce the usage of high power devices such as heaters and air conditioning systems. Sure, using natural light instead of electric light will help you save money, but lights probably aren't racking up your utility bill all that much compared to your heating and cooling systems. As for all the little things, always opt for energy efficient technology. If you still have incandescent bulbs in your house, go ahead and replace them with LED bulbs. And unless you love CRTs for their retro look or incredibly low input latency, go ahead and invest in a flat screen. As for air conditioning, just remember that less clothing equals more savings. Do you have any power saving tips? If so, leave them down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.